Here's me learning something new. This is the look on your face when you learn something new. Huh. Huh. Hi everybody. So I am currently testing out different camera angles. I have my laptop set up on top of a shoebox and I have my my Ricky Skinny light that I'm playing with looking for lighting and that's probably going to be the worst one right there. Um, I do feel like I'm inside one of those whatever. Anyway. Stay tuned. Um, I'm going to do a get ready with me on a no foundation makeup makeup look. Uh, what the fuck is it called? No makeup makeup look. AKA the I've got five minutes and I live with a house full of boys and they're like And you want to put on a full face of makeup and you can't. So that's what I'm going to do today. And we'll continue to talk and ramble. And this time I promise to be a little bit louder and more well pronounced. Because watching my last video I was Mumbles McGee. Um, I've turned the TV down in the background. Thank God. I've, I've already learned a lot. Um, if you hear little pitter patter or snoring or what sounds like farting. I have English Bulldogs, and they make a wealth of noise, an obscenely obnoxious wealth of noise. So uh, I'm going to have a clean face whenever I 3, 2, 1, and we'll get started. I've learned this is why it's called a five head instead of a four head. Oh, I feel like I could set a village on fire with that reflection. <laughs> But this is something that I'm obsessed with. It's called Beautician's Agua. Just kidding. It's called Beauty Water. Uh, it's made by Sun and Park. It's a Korean skincare company. And in my mind, there's a lot of K-beauty products that are actually made by companies that are not K-beauty at all. Because if you know anything about what K-beauty actually is, it's a Korean export. Basically, the country of South Korea needed something to export, you know, about 20 years ago. Um, and so basically, instead of being agriculture sound or anything like that, they really kind of went into pop or necessity, excessiveness, things like that. And that's actually marketing genius, in my opinion. Um, but if you ever look up a lot of the history behind K-Beauty, that's actually part of why they export so much stuff and there's so much fun and cutesy pootsy bullshit behind it because that's the country's way of making money. It's um, fascinating and I'm nowhere near explaining it to the uh, effective beautifulness that it is now um, in any way, shape, or form. So what I'm going to start with today is I've just kind of cleaned my face with some beauty water and I have this that was part of a little duo set. Uh, this is Sika Pear in Ceramidin Cream. Ceramidin, actually. Uh, sometimes I kind of feel like I'm a little too Cajun to say things right, but I know what I'm talking about. I feel like I kind of have the uh, Doug Dynasty BS mindset sometimes where you're smart, but you sound stupid. So I greatly apologize in advance for anyone that thinks that they're watching a dumbass on camera. I definitely act the part, but I don't play out that way. I don't know why I'm talking shit to myself right now. Do you guys like to do that? Do you ever just like go hard on a certain subject when no one really cares to begin with or there was never that assumption to begin with? Like, I find myself because... I'm from Louisiana. I'm from a small town, Louisiana, where it's nothing but nothing but life that doesn't take you very far. I don't know. Let's find a nice way to put it. I, I'm just not. I don't feel like I meshed well with anything that was there. Um, this is Banana Bright Eye Cream by Ole. Hey Ole. I know I'm mispronouncing your name, but I'm sorry. That almost went straight in my eyeball. I 
of the mirror right here, so I apologize if I'm not staring at you in the face, but it's kind of awkward for myself to make eye contact with my laptop constantly, too. Um, so, being from a small town, I went from the small town midway through high school, now we're going back about 15 years, I so sorry, um, to moving to Washington State outside of Seattle. And I was the kid that that sounded like the country girl that said this, that, these, and those, and y'all, and so much twang in my voice to where it was very awkward feeling. And I felt like everyone was really kind of giving this, this precursing judgment of what an idiot or it, that kind of thing. And I don't know. I, I think it's healthy to outgrow that, but then it's also quasi entertaining to own it to an extent. Um, what it really pushed me to do is not want to be a part of that, but outgrow it in such a way that even if it was a part of me, you wouldn't know. But let's see, as I talk myself into a circle, um, I thrived on education from that mindset. So moving to bigger cities where you have more opportunity available for you, um, whether it be um, different outlets of education at different universities. I will say the small town I lived in, it felt like you could either go to school to do nursing or you could go to school to work in a chemical plant. And that was kind of like the outlets there. And if you didn't choose one of those outlets, then you could work at a gas station, you could drive a school bus. The hell? <laughs> Um, I didn't want any of that for myself, so uh, I'm very thankful that I was able to move out of this small town, but if you hear me say something stupid without very much explanation behind it, I'm sorry. I'm learning from doing these videos. I do like to babble and just constantly talk, and I think that's probably part of the excitement of wanting to make a channel. I digress. I am also kind of letting <laughs> these creams I put in my face dried out a little bit so rambling has a little bit of a um, meaning behind it I guess so I'm gonna swirl the camera around and I'm gonna show you a little bit of my makeup stash because what I'm gonna do is constantly be reaching between here so it's probably more beneficial for me to grab what I want and go from there so hey everybody this right here is sample haven it's all kinds of different samples and then this back here is this is me covering a sink right now but i have some skincare right here and then mountasia of makeup over there and that's just face brushes i have a cup of eye brushes i am super left-handed so they're already exactly where they need to be Meow. cheesiest thing i'll do today i swear to god I'm going to use this today. I was playing with um, trying to pull out some old stuff that I have that I love that I don't show enough attention to. This is my Holy Grail and its name speaks very true to its character. Um, I've had this for about a year now and it was one of my first bigger palettes. It was a 20 pan palette. I just didn't like the vibes of what I did earlier today. You saw my, my eyeballs at the beginning of the video. I used Transition Bestie Brownie Points and a little bit of Teddy Bear with these two colors here. One on the inner and one on the outer. And I just kind of like left me feeling flat. So we're going to pop open this bad boy. And this is the Sienna's. Sexy Sienna's. Um, I've played with this a little bit. I will tell you. Here it is in order, and there I am in the camera, and then there's the like inception, like, um, so the lightest shade, meh, this shade, which is called Brassy, holy hell, is that not the best shade on the planet? Um, Foxy, an amazing, amazing transition shade. I have three of these little Dose of Colors palettes, and holy shit, they're amazing. Um, I did put the eye cream on my eyes and that does feel a little tacky. I'm not going to uh, 
prime and set and all that magic just because this is probably 10 minutes in the video and we haven't done our makeup and we're trying to do like five minutes quick. Um, if you like ramble Kathy's, God knows you have found her. All right, Pam, quit talking. All right, so I'm starting off with Stay Sassy. And I'm going to come on in to you. No, I'm not. That's the closest I'm going to get. And we're just going to barely, so we're going to touch anything that's a little more tacky. So that way we're not just like having one little area grab. So we're setting lightly throughout the crease. And for me, I like to keep this part of my eye looking thicker. All right, we're going over here. I keep this part looking thicker. Thicker, so for me, I like to really kind of give this more of a deep feel. Unless I'm going to create something larger, then I'll kind of scrub over it. But on my face, this can kind of be a little bit more of like chubby. I hope you can hear me tapping on my face. I can hear it because my brow bone is pretty damn prominent right there for me. I like to swirl inward to kind of create a little bit more dimension going up in this way. Um, something I've learned. Hell, I think it's from watching Jacqueline Hill's videos, is be mindful of the way that you're swirling your brush. So if I'm left-handed and I'm like going this way, then I can't go this way over here. I need to go this way so that way there's a lot of uniformity. Um, same thing, brush. If you are doing this, you're really bringing color down automatically. If you may not want to, especially if you're layering different transition colors. Um, I like to rotate my brushes too, not like multiple brushes, but knowing that I had color on, knowing that I had color on this side of the brush when I tapped it in, I may pat that inward and flip my brush over. Yeah, you can tell I did that. And then I have powder kind of sifting through the bristles of the brush, but kind of falling upward and I can blend it downward so it's not that crazy. Um, I don't know why I learned that. Anyway, that's a mild rhyme to the reason, Rachel. So I'm gonna skip over that like sexy peachy shade. I'm sorry, you're just gonna see your reflection today. I'm new. I'm new at the shit. Um, I'm gonna explain what brush this is. I got it at a boxy term, and I really like it. It's a uh, a Moda or Royal Langham brush. You can find these at Walmart. And it was actually like, it's the brush brand we all kind of ignore. The rainbow style brushes, the very chromey looking brushes, but like this logo. Brushes like this? Holy shit. Like these brushes are actually pretty fucking impressive. Um. Something else I love about this dose of colors is that they're so soft, but you really don't have any fallout. It's impressive. Impressivo. Y'all hear that? So, I don't know about you guys, but after a while of living with bulldogs, I have three English bulldogs and I have one pit bull. There's one right there. This is a towel. <laughs> anyway, real life, the house is dirty. Um, you can tell who is who depending on how they walk. So like the one walking right now, walking away. And these are ears right here, actually. <laughs> so keep an eye because you'll see this little lump move because this is a drawer with a cubby underneath it. So there's a black mass sitting right here. His name is Django. Django like Star Wars, not Django like um, that amazing movie. This is Brandy. Brandy is eight years old. She drags her feet when she walks out of spite. <clears throat> and I say that because uh, she picks her feet up when she's in a good mood. So if she wants to be noticed, God knows that's all you will ever hear. Um, she likes to, she knows I'm talking about her too. See, she comes closer every time she hears her name. Brandy was my first English Bulldog. 
Where is it now? So you'll notice the ears are gone. He just parked it too. Um, Brady was my first bulldog, and what a learning experience that was because bulldogs are no joke. Bulldogs not only do you need to be realistically willing to spend money on medical bills, but if you get lucky and you have a dog that is totally healthy, like Brandy's a rock. She likes to go run around outside and play. and she's She actually looks like a little deer. Um, when she was a puppy, a lot of people would constantly ask me if she was a boxer and why I got her tail docked. Um, and that's where my favorite part was correcting people to say. Um, <laughs> long story short, Brandy has one hell of a personality. And I, I don't even know if I mean that in a nice way or a bad way, to be honest with you. One of the funniest things when Brandy first came home was we actually started recording it because we thought it was the funniest thing on the planet um, is she would start talking and I mean like <laughs> and if you have a French Bulldog or an English Bulldog or hell a dog that does that because I know there's quite a few breeds of dogs that do that oh my god it's the most annoying thing on the planet and looking back I feel like there's a part of me that supported her doing that and was like oh talk to me granny talk to me talk to me and i just opened this can of worms for eight years eight whole years eight whole years and now that she's getting up there in age brandy like when she wants to go potty she's gotta go and you, it's stop what you're doing we go potty now she will go and stand in the middle of the living room and I'll record it one day for you guys because it's, it's sometimes it's, it's annoying but sometimes it's kind of funny and you'll just randomly be doing something and you'll hear this one sharp Rah! and you're like oh it's potty time and you'll go in the living room and Brandon will be standing there like a setter with her nose like pointing at the door just like yep 12 seconds 13 seconds 14 15 waiting, waiting, <laughs> and then she goes outside, does her business, and comes back in, and it's pretty freaking funny. I do appreciate it, the sound off, but it is like someone barking like someone's robbing the house kind of shit. Heaven forbid if somebody ever break into the house, the dog would probably make him a sandwich. So, I'm using my little arrowhead brush. This is Smith Cosmetics. And all I've been doing is taking that middle shade here, which to me kind of feels like a great um, compliment to the uh, baked browns. That middle shade. Ugh. You know I was going to pull that one out, didn't I? So, here's this one. one now yes this one is cool tone warm tone but this shade just oh, needs to be wedged up in here that works. okay so longest video on the planet I'll get better at this shit eventually I say eventually meaning like maybe we'll come back and keep doing it um, let me grab a brush this this is my best friend. Now, everybody has that one brush, that Morphe, whatever it is, that they die hard love. This is by Cover Effects. It is the uh, Focus Motherfucker Custom Blending Brush. It is super dense. It's everything that I want an artiste brush to be. Like, it's a dome shape, but it's not soft. Like, let me get some work done with this brush. Um,. So what I'm going to use is this. Dear Mac, please bring this motherfucker back. They came in quite a few different shades. And my favorite one is sitting in my makeup. 
and I don't want to use it because the contour portion it's really really short and it's already broken off and I feel like if I hold it at a downward angle on my forehead I will get really mad when it falls out long story short so all I'm gonna do with this is we're gonna strike one strike two um, for contouring something I think is very important to be mindful of is that you have zones on your face the bottom of your eyebrows to your forehead is one zone so we're blending this area backwards we really should have stopped a little bit higher up um, this section to the tip of your nose so that's really important for you to be mindful of if you're to draw this like a mask so I'm gonna cut off the bottom of my ears you don't want your contour to go any lower so I actually draw an L like this and be very mindful to like blend up oh my god this is this is the look it's a look Dimple it. Oh, keep a dimple in. No, that's not what we want. You see that tap dancing noise behind me? It's so obnoxious. Now we're gonna create the chin. That's what I think about every time I draw my face like this. Just to let you guys know, I live at home with my husband. And a 15 year old boy man child so whenever I walk around the house in a mask or something like this all hell breaks loose because I am automatically an alien this is one of those brushes like I can do this without a mirror Okay, I always inevitably have my hair like swirling around in my brush, so I always hold my hair back. And I'm doing circle motions towards my hairline. And you can't tell how amazing I look on camera, of course, but in real life. So for this, I go down, but I really kind of act like I'm putting on highlighter or blush and keep it in that upper area and constantly keep brushing it upward. And I notice when I do that, you get more of an actual like nip tuck look because I want to create as much of a jawline as possible. So I've noticed like whenever I used to like stripe a contour like where I thought it would go, and you blend it out, you're really erasing a lot of this opportunity. <laughs> um, so that's why I've really kind of gotten into the habit of doing it so high. So this kind of becomes its own little triangle. And for anyone out there that thinks I'm doing this wrong, A, half the planet will tell you there's no way to, no wrong way to make up. B, the other half of the planet will sorely disagree with you. And see, this is my fucking channel. I'm gonna do what the fuck I want. And as long as I leave the house feeling like a million dollars, I think we're all pretty safe, right? Um, on the other side of this quick trick, you have a contour shade and a highlighter. So this, I'm really just drawing downward. I do have a lot of texture, so I stay out of like this outer third of your eye area because that's where you'll really start to see some of that and I kind of just go out here I do like that angelic look so I go above my eyebrow you know that five five head bling forehead bling and so we notice like I have a mess here a mess here I like to really smear it out with my fingers so when you go on the bottom you're creating that lip, y'all. When we go on the top, we start talking about that lip. Like, what the fuck? 
All right, I don't know that's big. All right, clown and nobody. And so this camera, I'm looking pretty flawless. <laughs> this camera, I can actually see what the hell I haven't done yet. So I'm going back in with this buddy. And we just pat this in gently. And to kind of keep with the trend of using cream products, you know the irony of all of this is, is that when I had makeup on earlier, I had concealer on. I haven't done that yet. So, which concealer do we want to play with today? Let's go with this. This is what I had on earlier. This is NARS Radiant Creamy in Canal. You can't tell if it's empty or not because the walls are like stuccoed with product. Oh, yeah. I'm starting to empty out this motherfucker, that's for sure. So, under eye. Now we just applied highlight in this area, so it can be really light fading it out that way, but usually I would carry that outward. And I also like to carry it down. We'll see why in a second. Uh, this, see if I could circle my face, that part of my face just stays pink and even if I um even if I conceal even when I blush everything like you can just see that redness kind of coming through even with some heavier foundations so a little extra concealer kind of just always calms it down especially on a no foundation type day and uh I really like the NARS radiant because it dries pretty quick to where you can brush on your face as opposed to some concealers that are 100% have to pat. Uh, it's not very emollient so I can kind of get shit done. I might go back in with a powder concealer and play with that. Just for shits and giggles, right? Um, it's Uh, so, what I'm using for blush, staying on the um, liquid products, this is by Glossier. It is um, cloud paint in the color bean, like some bean. And so I'm just dolloping that shit right there. Um, something really helpful to be mindful of is I can't even put my fingers together. Two fingers next to your nostrils, keep your blush out here, and even when you smile, apple of my cheek, relax it, it's only one finger, so you can just apple of the cheek, it out here now. And I promise you, if you kind of stay with that mindset of doing that, it gives you a more youthful, that, that was way too fucking much. Uh, gives you more of a youthful look and kind of lifts your face a little bit. So, oh my god, Blush City, here we is. Oh man, y'all, I have touched down in Blush Town. So the terrible thing is, is that you can't, you can't really tell. Um, this obscenely large thing is a Ricky Skinny mirror. Yeah, I've been Jordan Glass. Just kidding. Um, these are amazing. Holy shit, is this amazing? I kind of feel better already. It's like a sad lamp. Um. Lighting is so much better too. Now we are dewy. We got the five head rocking, which is normal. Just kidding. 
Um, it's the only other thing I would do from here, and now I'm kind of drawing a blank, making sure I'm not forgetting something. Um, is I'll put on a little bit of lipstick. Right now, what I've really been enjoying doing is using, man, that was my stepson that just texted me. Um, he's at the mall, and I said, can you go on this floor and look for this? Um, this is the Fresh Sugar Lip Caramel, and I'm almost empty. Um, usually taking my finger with the longest nail on it. He's our victim today. And I just scoop a little bit out. I mean like a good substantial amount. And I just rub that in. I love this. This is crack for your face. Um, this, when I first got it, I was so put off by that sugary smell of caramel. But I love the way it felt on my lips. And after I got over the surge of wanting to eat it, um, I'm pretty addicted to it. So that's magic. Um, this is usually where I would stop. I keep my favorite mascara in my purse. Um, I don't even bother taking it out and putting it anywhere over here because if I go somewhere and I need mascara and I don't have it with me, I, it's one of those mood changers. Like you are instantly just kind of annoyed with yourself for doing so, something so tragic to yourself. Um, I had another tube, I do, right here that I haven't opened yet because the one I have is getting close to that um, a few months mark. BT dubs don't play around with mascara. If you've had something for two or three years, throw that shit away. Um, this is Extended Play Giga Lash. What the fuck do I call this? I always call it Giga Lash Black, and I have no idea why I call it that or where I got that name from. Um, Extended Play Lash. I think the color is called Giga Black. That's probably what it is. Um, this says Endlessly Black, so... If somebody that works at Mac can tell me where the fuck I really came up with that, I would appreciate it. Um, this mascara, it will not flake. It is somewhat of a good hydrating mascara. Um, it's got a really thin wand. I'm not opening that one because I don't want it. It's a little cloth to start counting. Um, but it's phenomenal. It really, really is. I, I've gone through maybe 30 tubes of that in my life. I've been using... Since I first really started playing with makeup, my mom would take me to the MAC store. That's right. I didn't know what the fuck Sephora was, but I knew what MAC was back in the day. Um, I loved going to the MAC counter with my mom. My mom, uh, when you're from a small town, a small little redneckish town, and your mom knows what lip glass is versus lip gloss, you have a cool mom. Um, I'm popping a little bit of a starlit powder by makeup forever into my inner corner just to play right now um before i say a walk but you see how i've got this little bit of a an orange brightness here's the inside of the lid can't really tell but it's got that orange look to it it's completely white in the container so it's just like it's not exciting at all um but it's called Frozen Orange. It's number th three. This shade is so cool. There is something about this that, like, I have tried to take so many pictures and so many boomerangs and so many, oh, so many snaps and so many everythings to show on Instagram what this looks like, and I can't do it. It's just next level, the faintest orange. And I really feel like the um, the Alchemist palette, the Kat Von D, this is the missing shade. This orange right here, baby. Oh, baby. Okay, so this is like my no makeup makeup look that I usually do a lot. So I do a very warm eye. I leave my lid pretty open. And I will go to town with some cloud paint and my matte quick stick. <sighs> 30 minute video on how to apply five products or less. Um, in the future, we're going to keep this to a low roar. Uh, I could be completely lying to you. I have no idea. Um, all I know is I wanted to kind of get my little rambling rambles out. Um, if you have some curiosity or some ideas of videos, let's share and talk about in the comment section. Um, 
I'm really loving playing with this. I'm really enjoying having my new computer and the ability to make and edit movies again. Um, my old black MacBook, I want to call it the black book, and if you know what I'm talking about, I'll go get it. It's like a brick. Um, it got so old to where I couldn't update it, and it was very sad because I genuinely love playing in Photoshop. I think it's still CS3 that's on that computer, so i um, got a lot of updating to do on this new one. Um, but I'm having fun doing this, and I hope you guys are having fun listening to me ramble my ass off and jump from conversation to conversation with myself. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Um, hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. Hit all the keys on your keyboard. Don't hit anybody. Stay in school. Drugs are optional. I really can't control what you do with your own free time. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. Um, I'll see you next time. Peace out.